I have just come back from visiting two of the islands in the Caribbean which have been dramatically affected by the recent hurricanes. I visited first Antigua and Barbuda and went by helicopter to the island of Barbuda. Many of us for the last 30, 40 years have been talking about the existential threat of climate change. That threat is evidenced by what I saw in Barbuda. Barbuda has basically been devastated. 80% of the houses no longer are fit for habitation and the whole population had to be evacuated. That devastation was evident when I went to see the previous habitants of Barbuda in a shelter in Antigua. We had 1,200 people who had lost everything. When I was taken round the island, people were pointing out to me various places and saying, this used to be the police station, and this used to be our school. And this used to be the council building in which we deliberated our matters. And what was quite extraordinary is this was all just two months ago. And a whole livelihood, a whole way of living was put to an end. And then I went to Dominica, which is the land of my birth. And my country was almost unrecognizable. Every tree had been stripped even of its bark. They were naked. What you see in the pictures now is two months of growth, two months of regreening. However, when you fly in, instead of seeing lush green vegetation, you see brown, stark, dead land. But the destruction was very much like a bomb has hit it. Because what you will notice when you look at these photographs is the total destruction of many of the buildings. And the rubble that you see is actually all that is left of a whole house. One of the things that will stay graphically in my mind forever is the sight of a woman sitting in the middle of rubble. To the left-hand side of her was a fridge freezer. To the right-hand side of her was a bed. But that was the only things left of what had, moments before the hurricane hit, been her home. She had celebrated her son's ninth birthday in that house three days before, and it had been her pride and joy. Three beautiful bedrooms, a wonderful veranda, a delightful kitchen and dining room, and a wonderful drawing room with a fantastic corner veranda overlooking a panoramic view. Within six hours, everything that she had worked for in her whole life was gone. Every plate, every pot, every pan, every sheet was no more. And the only thing she, her husband, and her family walked away with was their lives. But they were grateful. And the reason they were grateful was because the MP, Miss Charles, pointed to a spot below that house, which I thought was a dent in the road. And I was told that it wasn't a dent in the road. That was the spot where three houses used to be. Three houses in which 14 people lived. And there was no sign of those three houses, not even the foundation stones. Because the lady I was spoken to had a foundation and had three steps left of her house. The 14 people were gone and so was their home, and there was no sign that any of them had ever lived there. I have never seen 
anything like I saw in Dominican Barbuda. This is the school in Barbuda. What you will see are the books and the debris, the debris left. So if anyone wants to ask, what does existential threat look like? It looks like this, total, utter devastation. <laughs>